And then let's move over to uh, the Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan. Minister of Wellness, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Call, and good morning to everyone tuning in, brothers and sisters. Shalom to you all. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, one of the things that you work with is, is people is teach people how to lose weight. Is, is overweight the issue that you think that's causing many of our health issues, our, our health challenges? Yes, it is. Obesity. Obesity is linked to every single disease. So it's one of the root causes of all disease is being obese, which is carrying far too much excess body fat or too much weight for our skeletal and organ, organ structure. And that causes uh, the leading causes of death to black people, heart disease, cancer, strokes, diabetes, chronic kidney disease. You can link all of those to obesity because that fat, don't, it doesn't just coat the outside of the body, but it's also on the in, internally, and that's called visceral fat. And that visceral fat pours into the blood vessels, pours into the organs, and, and wreaks havoc on the body. Um, so we're, we're at a uh, we're at nearly a, a 80 to 100 percent overweight obesity rate among black men and black women combined. And now it's even affecting our children, which is why our children now have a, a battling heart disease, diabetes, strokes and cancer. Right. But you know what? Uh, and I got to ask you this, uh, Minister of Wellness, the BMI index, it, was that created for our bodies? Are our bodies structured? Uh, uh, you know, some some holistic doctors will say that our body structures are different from the Europeans. So when, when, for them, you know, they, they're, they're, these all these uh, the metrics that they use to say well, if you're overweight or if you got high blood pressure and all that, it, it wasn't for us. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I just don't I just don't see what is true among our people before the it before the rise of fast food, before we got addicted to all of these fast food death shacks and all of these food deserts. I just don't see that. What I see historically, and especially if you see those of us coming over from Africa or those of us who are already present, if you look at the natives, what you see if you go back, you, you see a very lean people. Even if you look, even if you look up like the the ancient African Israelites or the ancient African Egyptians, you see a very lean people. Almost all the men, because back then, especially when we were in our proper environment, brother Carl, we really the, the men usually didn't have uh, shirts on, especially the the black Egyptians. You see, they're very they're very lean. All of them had six packs. All the men had six packs, and then the women were small too. But our lives were much more physical. We were out in the sun. We were living very physical lives, the men and the women, and that kept the weight down. And then even when we came over here from Africa, we brought a lot of plant of plant foods that we were growing and eating. So I don't see that. I, what I see, first of all, is that they have manipulated the BMI to actually be a little more loose because of the overall obesity problem uh, in America and in the world. And then secondly, again, you can you can see overweight and obesity in our people and even in all people you you can see a direct correlation to the introduction of fast food to obesity in our communities so no i i just don't see historically how that how that can be the case and, and, and you know speaking about obesity and fast food now a lot of if you go to the continent a lot of the, especially the major cities they, they have some of the fast food outlets yeah. that we have here there do you think they're going to have an issue pretty soon with, with their folks well, they already have because I get I have um, I, I have our brothers and sisters in the motherland that reach out to me all the time saying that I need to come and tour the Caribbean or I need to come to Africa because it is it's gotten pretty bad and their rates are incre increasing to where it's pouring over. Like you said, everybody wants to be like a nation that that profits from death. It's just incredible to me how at this point in time as evil of a country that we live in, how other nations still look to this one as to be the, the version, the topic cat. That's amazing to me with all the destruction that's going on right now with the economy, with the air pollution, water pollution, uh, killing people for profits. And yet they still want to be like here. I, I, that just boggles my mind. Uh, but yes, that it is a huge, it is a huge problem uh, it, that's growing over there, but not as near as bad yet. But it's it's getting there. 
Yeah, it's not just on the continent, as you say. It's it's worldwide. Everybody wants to have a yes. well, we'll mention them, the fast food outlets there, and everybody yeah. thinks that that's. I guess is that because we export uh, these movies and and videos, and, and people mm-hmm. see us, you know, going to these drive through and picking up fast food, and, and they is it, is that the lifestyle? I guess my question is is going to be: Is it the lifestyle they're t- trying to adopt while adopting these bad habits as well? It is because they look to us as being a, a, a rich nation and, and black Americans as, as, as even if you take all of us in our ghettos, I think if you combine all the wealth of, of black people just in America, I think we're the 10th richest nation in the world. And so worldwide, even black people, we, but, you know, from our perspective, we're not doing well economically, but from the perspective of a poor brother or sister living in Africa, I mean, we live in the lap of luxury, even if we in projects here. So I believe that's a part of it. And like you said, we've exported our culture over there through the spreading of the American empire. And they do generally, they view us uh, as being, as being rich and wealthy. And so they aspire to be like us. And so, and so, so you, I, I'm agreeing with you. Uh, 12 after the top there. So how do we flip that around? How can we show the rest of the world that we're, you know, what they see on, on, because this is the problem. This is part of the problem when when foreigners yeah. come here, because they see what they see on TV, what they see in these videos and these rap. They think we're all like that, or or they <laughs> think we're all rich like Michael Jackson. You know, I, you run into them, and that's why and that's why they treat us that way because that's the, the the that's the information they they've been fed. So how do we how do we show them the reality of what life is really like in Black America? And that's a and that's a and that's a difficult one. Is that how do you how do you overpower media that's controlled by enemies and oppressors? And so then, of course, you have brothers and sisters that will say, "Well, we need to have our own media." Well, we know that we usually don't support. The first thing people say when I have a book, I have I have books, and I only sell them through my website. And everybody always asking me to go on Amazon. Why? Jeff Bezos don't need no more money. You know, so it, it's just a. It, then if I'm off of YouTube, then if I go to another platform and start my own platform, say, why don't you just come to my website and watch my videos? And then all of a sudden, there's a great fall off. So we, this is something the the media, the media, radio. You know, the we're talking about a just something that's so deeply controlled, uh, brother Carl. That 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 is something that I'm I'm trying to figure out is how do you overpower those who control movie productions and TV. And that's a huge mountain. Uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, he, he, even I, as the minister of wealth, is, uh, is, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how would we do that. Right. Because that, that's part of being well as well, because they, they they control our minds. And, and I know yeah, you, I that, that's part of what yeah. you do. Yes. Yeah. For, yeah. Manipulating the mind, brainwashing the brain to believe that eating McDonald's is some kind of way a sign of wealth that it's a sign of wealth to be able to eat yourself to death but you know what's interesting brother Carl, is that actually historically that's true and that's why we're so fat and sick in this nation because historically we were able it was only the kings and the queens that could eat themselves to death they were the only ones who could afford to be to commit gluttony because they could afford the food they could afford to be lazy so here in America, with us still being viewed as a wealthy nation, even black folk, we're still viewed as wealthy. We're the 10th wealthiest in the world as a people. And so our brothers and sisters on the motherland living in rural areas, and they don't have toilets or shoes or nothing. They see us in the ghettos fighting over $120 Jordans. Trust me, they view us as being rich still. And so therefore, we all have the ability to eat ourselves to death and so over there, they're viewing that as a sign of wealth that, hey, once I'm be- a part of becoming successful, a part of having a lot of money, a part of being a quote unquote American is that now I can enjoy all of the delicacies and all of this rich processed Franken foods. And that has usually been true historically. 
Oh, well, hold that thought right there because we're going to take a quick break. 16 after the top of the hour. We've got some folks who really want to talk to you. You want to speak to the Minister of Wellness? You've got a health challenge? Reach out to us at 800 450 7876. We'll take your calls in about four minutes in Baltimore on 1010 WOLB. In the DMV, we're on FM 95.9 and AM 1450 WOL, where information is power. And good morning again, family. 22 minutes after the top of the hour with the Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan. You've got a health challenge, a health question. He's the man you need to talk to. 800 800- 450-7876 is going to be in town this weekend we'll tell you about that also later but before I take a call for you though Minister Wellness I want to piggyback on what you said about on the continent because I remember a trip to Benin and the, one of the, these one of the wealthiest guys in the town and he had a banquet for us the, the, on our last night in Benin and, and he stood out because he had what we would call a beer gut you know because everybody else was they, they, well, they, they were proportionate so when we got back to L.A. now, we're going to write them letters because there's no Internet, of course. So we got, this is in the 90s. We're going to write them letters and, you know, just thank them for hosting us and all of that. They told me the guy had dropped dead. He had a heart attack. So it goes to still what, you know, what you have been, it underscores what you've yeah. been telling us about that, about, about the extra weight. Yeah, yeah. And that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that. And my condolences to him and the family. So, yes, it's an epidemic and all that weight sitting on the gut it takes. It, it 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 puts too much pressure in the heart, and the heart fails. And the Most High don't care about how much money you have if you don't eat and obey His biological laws of cause and effect. Your health, your number one health, is your wealth. And so, once again, uh, Brother Carl, just you know, taking up you know the mantle and 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 saying I shade to our ancestors, Doctor Layla African, Doctor CB. This is just a, a critical message that we continue to ignore because of our addiction, and it is sad to see um, that so many African nations, our people over there trying to mimic the ways of this abominable country that we're living in with this horrendous fake food diet. And I'm, I just wish that, that like you said, my, my hope, I won't say wish, my hope and prayer is that this type of information can overpower. But again, we have very, very powerful enemies and oppressors that control a lot of the information that's being disseminated to them over there about us. Yeah and glorifying right. the wicked ways of our culture. Yeah, I shade of that. 25 after the top of the hour. Let's take some calls for you. 800-450-7876. Uh, Charles III is on line one. He's calling from the district. Charles, you're on with the Minister of Wellness. Uh, thanks, Carl, for taking my call. Uh, I got a comment and uh, two quick questions for the brother. The comment is, uh, Carl, as you mentioned, the BMI index, and some people thinking uh, it doesn't apply to us. I just think we've gotten kind of out of whack with that. And this obesity and overweight is a recent phenomenon. And I say that because I was watching on YouTube some old Soul Train videos. And when you go back and look at the young people in the 70s and what they weighed and how they were built versus our young people now, there's a significant difference there. And it's just in the 80s, we started eating and getting out of hand. Uh, yep. And so my question to uh, Brother Nate is, can you comment on a lot of the commercials now? You have black people in there who are obese and overweight as if they're presenting to us as, hey, this is okay. You see bigger black women as if to say this is acceptable there and leading us down the road that that's okay. And then uh, the f- second question is, I know you got a program coming up this uh, yes. weekend, and, and it starts at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. and, and there's some events going on in the city, a lot of street closures. So the question is, for a guy like me, I can't get over there till a little later. How late is that going to go on, the program? I know it starts at 10, but how late are you going to be there? Okay, well, let, let me let me address the uh, well, excellent comment, by the way. I completely agree. So the first comment about them targeting obesity acceptance in the black community, that's what me and you just talking about, Carl. Our, we have our enemies and oppressors that control this, and and, and it's like how, how do we overtopple them? And that's an issue that, um, you know, someone who you're very familiar with, Brother Carl, Ayo Kamati, the irritated genie, that's a question he tries to, that he, he spends his whole life trying to trying to work on that issue it's a serious problem when you have people that hate our people and want to destroy our people 
and now they're using uh, giving money to black people that are willing uh, to, to, to have coonish behavior to where they're being used to push obesity on our people via commercials. How do you stop that? How do you stop that? Um, so that, so that's the, so the, the answer to the first question is, is that again, you know, I, I, I almost, I can't, I can't be, have too much pride to say, I don't know how you overcome it. Because even when I'm at the gym, that, that's all I see on TV. I'm at the gym trying to work out. And every other commercial is a big juicy cheeseburger. So, so that, so, so this is just something that we we just all have to continue to work on and put our heads together on, on how to stop watching this stuff. We need to stop watching it. We need to turn off the TV. There needs to be a boycott. That's what we need to do. We need to do an old fashioned media boycott to to not allow our children and not allow ourselves. So, I believe that that is a first step and a first solution in the right direction, but then we have to deal with TV addiction. Now, for the for the second uh, question, yes, I am in town actually now. I'm already in Washington, D.C. now preparing for Saturday. So this Saturday at Union Temple Baptist Church, Southeast Washington, D.C., uh, hosted by Rock Newman, we are having a free community health fair and seminar and yes, the door is open at 10. However, that's the health fair part. We have uh, the medical examiner for D.C., Dr. Roger Mitchells. We honor that he's going to have a mini clinic set up, brothers and sisters, for free. So you can come out and get your different testings, which I do believe in. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I believe in the testings, because if you're eating the satanic American diet, I don't want you ending up like the brother that brother Carl just mentioned who just dropped dead of a heart attack. You need to know your numbers. But then once you know your numbers, we have Dr. Ruby Lathan. She's going to be there serving some delicious, uh, uh, some delicious plant-based soul food. Okay, so you definitely want to get there for that because I already told her to save me uh, several plates. <laughs> and, then, and, then, uh, and then we will have the seminar will start at noon. That part will start at noon. So even if you don't get that team, we want you to get there, support, support the vendors. I will have my products uh, there at a discounted rate there at the table, but the sir, the program starts at noon, and I should be up to speak around 1230, and then after that, we'll have time still to eat and so forth. So you still have plenty of time, uh, brothers and sisters, to come on out to Union Temple Baptist Church. It's absolutely free. That's this Saturday. If you're sick, you need healing, you have any conditions, I'm going to teach you how to reverse them anyway, so I don't care about uh, if you're there and you, you have a clinic set up, you need to know your numbers. Know your numbers and then come with your notebook and pen ready, and I'm going to teach you how to reverse them all anyway. Because if you listen to me, you'll heal, you'll heal quickly anyway. Could, could I make one final comment? Hey, I, I was trying to tell some people about you, brother, in my hometown, which is your hometown, and uh, because they took me to a place uh, and said, hey, check this out. And I said, you guys need to talk to the minister well. They said, hey, that's Eddie Jordan's son. The brothers over at Blessed Hope, man, they need you. They uh, heavy bear brothers over there. They know you. And I said, man, you guys need to call this guy. You know, I talked to Swan. <laughs> I said, hey, you got to call that brother, man. I said, his work is good. So if you get back home, call them, man. Because they need yeah, you, you, you go. You bring you back some them. old memories. Bless the old Bible. <laughs> exactly. yeah. All right, man. I'll see you Saturday. I appreciate your work, brother. All okay. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Thanks, Charles. 29 away from the top of the hour with the Minister of Wellness. Uh, Zach's online, too. Zach's in Baltimore. Zach, you're on with the Minister. Good morning. How are you gentlemen doing this morning? Hey, listen, I have this. I'm glad you brought this up because I, this, this has been heavy on my heart for a long time now, and I'm talking 15 more years or so. I've been listening to brothers, man, walk around the street, and all they say is, man, we want big, fat women, man. We like big, fat women. And I would say to them, man, that's not healthy, dude. Why would you tell some, a woman that, man? That's not good for our women to tell, say something like that. And I said, you know what? In reality, I know what you're doing. You're just using them women. And yeah. then I would hear, I heard a lady not too long ago 
on a radio show, and she says she, you know, with women screaming about they can't find no good, no black men, and this and that and so forth. She says she went to a graduation, and she said every black woman that walked across that stage was so obese. She said you can understand why not. What is going on here? Are we our own worst enemy here? We are. We, right. we are, brother. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Go ahead, Zach. Minister. We are. We are our own. It, it should be. I mean, it, it's, you know, come on, come on, brothers and sisters, Saturday to the DMV. We're talking about you know, free health fair, free health seminar. There, there's not a single person listening to this video that doesn't know somebody that's died from heart attack, stroke, diabetes, or are battling those things. You know, and, and all we have to do is just simple numbers to see how we're we're just refusing to address this issue of health and nutrition and we're promoting our own destruction. That's why it's the greatest it's the greatest weapon of mass destruction that these satanic people that hate our people have ever created because they made it addicting to where they know that okay, we'll kill them with a with food that tastes so good, they'll ignore that. So therefore the satanic criminal justice system we all know people in our family that are in prison that's been affected by the criminal justice system. I promise you, you know 20 times as many family members and loved ones that have died from or are currently battling heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and so forth. So if you have, if you have a man that's in town doing something for free that lost 100 pounds of reverse heart disease, really it shouldn't even be able to fit at Union Temple Baptist Church. We should have to rent out a stadium. Because every black person is affected by the satanic American diet. Every, every single person. All right, and, hold and that so thought right I'm, there, Minister, because we got to take a quick break here. We got to check the news, traffic, and weather in our different cities. I'll let you finish your thought when you come back. And also, Brother Man, too, in New York City has got a question for you. 800 450 7876. You too can join this conversation with the Minister of Wellness. We'll take your calls in four minutes right here in Baltimore on 1010 WLB. In the DMV, we're on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. And good morning again, family. 19 minutes away from the top of the hour with our guest, the Minister of Wellness. Before we go back to the Minister of Wellness, just want to remind you, kind of later this morning, though, we're going to speak with a clinical and industrial psychologist. There, that would be Dr. Edwin Nichols, one of the smartest brothers out there. He's going to explain how the school-to-prison pipeline really works and how to teach our children to, to spot racism. Also before him, though, we're going to speak with Dr. Crystal Francis. Dr. Francis is the Vice President of the Maryland Alliance for Justice Reform. It's an agency designed to end unnecessary incarceration and tomorrow we're going to have on with us the dean of black journalists uh, the reverend dr barbara reynolds you know, some of you've heard her before you know she wrote that book at the with the uh, the autobi- autobiography of Coretta Scott King, and also she did a book on Jesse Jackson as well. Also, chemitologist Tony Browder was going to join us as well tomorrow. So make sure that your radio is locked in in Baltimore on 1010 WOLB. Also in the DMV on FM 95.9 and AM 1450 WOL. As I mentioned, uh, Minister Wells, you got some folks who want to speak with you. Let's go to line three. Brother Man 2 is calling us from New York City. Brother Man 2, you're on with the Minister of Wellness. Yes, what's up, my brothers? Um, I find it the information always great. Um, Coming for me, my brother, and I appreciate it. Um, it's great that you're going to Union Temple, as you know, as you know the body, our body, is the original temple. Uh, my question for you, uh, my brother, is how does fasting help in um, maintaining one's health? Uh, I'm not just talking about intermittent fasting. I'm just talking, you know, whether it's a 21-day fast, seven-day fast, etc. Yes, sir. Right, thanks, man. Yes, thank you. Yep, and, and thank you, uh, brother. Yes, the, the fasting has excellent benefits because of long-term fasting because the body can only heal in the state of fasting. Now, I do believe that uh, fasting, if you're talking about doing um, a strict uh, no, no eating uh, fast at all, then I would recommend doing what they call a juice fast. If you do a strict H3O2 fast, uh, it 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 will definitely uh, produce a lot of healing benefits in the body. However, I do view it as also very powerful for spiritual reasons, for purging the body of of spiritual addictions which manifest themselves physically. So, of course, as a minister, I I am a huge advocate 
of not just the physical benefits, healing benefits, but also the spiritual benefits of fasting. Now, me personally, I do believe that if you go very strict on on the perfect, the perfected way that we should be eating, which is a which is a fruit based eating style, I do believe that healing can occur extremely rapidly. So again, I would emphasize that a long term fasting is great for healing, but also even more powerfully for uh, uh, really helping with, uh, with uh, for spiritual reasons. All right. Well, let me ask. Thank you, brother Matthew. Let me let me follow up a question on this. Do you believe that every illness can can be reversed just by just by fasting, just by losing weight? I do, I do. I believe in everything, and and that's why everybody needs to come out to Union Temple. I do from from handicappedness to autism, all the way to to end stage cancer and and does dialysis. I absolutely do. I believe when we embrace the ways of the creator of the entire universe. There is nothing impossible for him to accomplish. Absolutely. All right. 16 away from the top of the hour. Let's take another call for you. Alex is on line one. He's calling from Alexandria in Virginia. Alex, you're on with the minister of wellness. Good morning. Um, calling. Good morning to the world. I listen to your guest. Um, my question, um, 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 to the doctor is, uh, can you break it down when people, constantly say that I'm a bull or I'm a fr- well, well break, break down the difference between broiling meat, frying meat, and I think it's, uh, what is that other one? Uh, well, practically taking the skin off. Is you still getting the same calorie intake um, um, from the difference if you can break that down? Yeah, well, yeah, there. There's all, all animal flesh is coming from an animal that was tortured and slaughtered for no reason. We've been brainwashed to believe that we need to, to kill, torture, and kill animals to eat them to get protein, and that's absolutely absurd. Uh, we get our protein from the plants just like that big, gigantic, massive, powerful elephant with huge bones growing out of his face that grows from the calcium and protein in the plants. It's the same with us. We can't eat death and get life. So what we try to do is because we're eating it abnormally, we try to manipulate something that's dead to make it seem better. And so broiling broiling it, uh, that kills a lot of the toxins and all the thousands of chemicals and toxins in the flesh. But you're still just eating a lump of mucus and pus and cholesterol and saturated fat that causes heart disease, diabetes, strokes, renal failure, and all sorts of diseases. And then frying is worse. Uh, then if you have the skin, if you take the skin off, you can mitigate a lot of the a lot of the excess fats and chemicals. But in the end, you're still putting death in your mouth and not life. So the results are still death plus death doesn't equal life no matter what you do. A lion can get life from eating it because a lion eats everything raw. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to eat everything raw. So really, if you want to get the nourishing benefits, then you can go all the way to the Neanderthal way and just eat the raw flesh with all the blood and everything in it. Once you light a fire to it, even with the meat, you're really taking all the nutrients out of it. That's why the lion eats everything and has blood all over its face, because that's where it's getting its nourishment from. And that's why giraffes and rhinos, no other animal cooks anything. They just eat it as it is. And for us, what we're supposed to consume that is as is and that's delicious, tasty, and very fulfilling that we all naturally grew up loving. We just fell off of it. And that's all of those different delicious fruits. And, and you know what? You sort of answered this tweeter's question before I take another phone call for you. Tweeter wanted to know about airless fryers. Those are the, and that's the new uh, system that people are using now to cook their food. Want to get your thoughts about that? Better. It, it, it's better than deep frying. But that doesn't mean it's healthy. My definition of health meaning that it's going to stop you from the next pandemic. That's my question. That's what I ask everyone, every single, everybody that's listening. Are you confident that you'll survive the next, the next pandemic? What is the death rate? Is 20, 30, 40 percent. If you were scared of COVID, what about smallpox? What about the Nipah virus, Hansa virus? And if you can't answer that question, then again, you need to come out Saturday. Or you need to change. You need to simply change what you're doing. And so that's how we should be eating. We need to be eating in self-defense. 
we need to be eating in self defense because we have we have 2023, 2024, and then the, and then the rulers and, and and the rulers that that hate our people. They've already stated 2025. The stimulation has already been done. And so we just don't, we just, we just, we just don't have time to play games with, with our health anymore. Well, you've been warned. 12 away from the top of the hour. Let's take some more calls for you on line two. Glaude's reaching out to us. He's in Baltimore. Glaude, you're on with the Minister of Wellness. Is Glaude there on line two? Line two. Oh. Yes, you're Hello. on the air, Glaude. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, good morning. Good topic, good topic. For the last 50 years, I've been a health uh, nut, and I see people all the time when I leave my house. I count them. I'll see if I see nine people, nine people is obesity. And since we don't have a TV and we don't have control of those commercials, I think if we can go back to the old school, instead of putting these banners on, you know, these murals on the wall, we need to put uh, the mural on the wall to let them know being obesity you know, you, it's going to damage your heart. It's going to damage your knees. As I go out, I'll see nine people limping, limping, and they don't realize they're putting a lot of weight on their, on their bodies. So if we can put banners in our community, and I'm still trying to think about doing that up in this area, put a banner across the top, you know, the to, uh, street and let people know, you know, if you grow your own food and eat properly, you, you can uh, uh, reverse a lot of this obesity. But believe it or not, the system got us so brainwashed until, yeah. you know, when you, hit, when you hear people that, and you try to tell people that obesity is not good, you know, they, they will let you out. Because I had cousins that, that wanted to cuss me out because I said, y'all look good, but y'all need to lose some weight. Man, they said that if you weren't my cousin, we will let you, we will cuss you out. So keep up the good work and, and think about those banners and those murals on the walls. Yeah. I think that's going to turn things around. All right, so y'all All have right. a good one. All right. Thanks, Lord. All right. All right. All right. There wasn't a question there, so I'll take, move on. Ten away from the top of the hour. Uh, Charles is also in Baltimore on line three. Charles, you're on with the Minister of Wellness. Yes. Yeah, so how you doing today? <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about genetically modified organizations. I mean, um, not, not the political thing. The genetically modified organisms that are in the salmon because I'm being told that the GMO salmon is actually cannibalizing the natural salmon. And I'm really mystified as to why they are genetically modifying salmon. So now they can genetically modify cows and pigs and other food that we eat. All right. Let's give them a chance to respond. Thanks, Charles. Minister of Wellness. Yeah. Still, they think they're God. They want to replace the creator. We're under the control of a people that hate nature. They hate the environment. We are different. I have on my playlist on my YouTube channel, The Minister of Wellness, I have that lecture by our ancestor, the prophet of African health, that I call him, Dr. Layla Africa. And I have that, that uh, message that he delivered called We Are Different. And that's just a that that melanin deficiency creates a lot of psych a lot of psychosis. They hate nature. They war against nature. Historically, we worship nature. We worship the rock, the sun, the moon. They don't. They war with it. And that's just who. That's just what we're under. And they've created us through the food system and the and the media. They are they are turning us into their image. So now we're the same way to where we think we have to kill to get protein. When again, a rhinoceros would destroy any carnivore in it. There's not a carnivore. The most vicious carnivore can't go toe to toe with no full grown male rhino. And the rhino has a big old spear sticking out of his nose, a pure bone that is literally built and grown from it eating grass and plants all day. And we still don't think about that. And we sit here with our puny behinds not even working out. And these Neanderthals have got us worried about protein. <laughs> Right, we come 17 away from the top of the hour. Let me ask you this, though, because you mentioned GMO. How can we tell the difference? It, just because, they, they, you know, they stamp it or put a label on it, it's not GMO. How do we know if it's for real? Is there a way that no, you can tell the difference? No, they're not. Well, first of all, it should be just stay away from all the animal, and then that takes care of that. You know, but cause just stay away from anything that, that's dead and 
you won't have to worry about that. But with the plants, no, no, sir. The um, the organic, if it's USDA organic, they are extremely strict um, with the USDA organic level and the non-GMO project. Those are strict. Those are strict. Then they do have the culture labels. Uh, those, those are very strict. And then, of course, we need to grow our own food. That's another element in this genocide. We don't control. We don't control the media. We don't control the hospitals. We don't control our food. We don't have land to grow our food. And then we want to support local farmers. Uh, James Boyd or John Boyd, what's the, the brother that's over the the black, the American Black Farmers Association? John Boyd, yeah. Right, yes, sir. Yeah, and he. How many administrations has he been? saying the same thing, that they're getting no support and they're intentionally trying to wipe out black farmers. So, uh, again, we're, we're so entertained by other things that we're not really focusing on these serious issues. You know, Bill Gates brought up, you know, he's the largest landowner in the whole nation now. He brought up millions and millions of acres of land that he's using to grow toxic potatoes. Well, hold on to right there, Minister Wellness and the family. We're going to take a quick break and take a gander at the traffic and weather for our commuters. I got some uh, tweet questions for you before we let you go, though. Six minutes away from the top of the hour. Folks, stick around and get some substance for your soul as we're returning. Four minutes in Baltimore on WOLB and also in the DMV on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. And good morning again, family. Minute after the top of the hour with the Minister of Wellness, Dr. Francis is on deck. We'll get to her momentarily. But Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan, I'll let you finish your thought. You were telling us that Bill Gates was buying up all this property? Yes, yeah, 250,000 acres across 18 states. 250,000. So I want everybody to let that sink in that a well known uh, eugenicist owns the most farmland. So what does that tell you? Where real power is at is at controlling food because if you control the food and you pollute all of the food, pollute the air, pollute the water, you keep people enslaved and you keep them focusing on important matters. But nothing is more important at this period of time than the health of our people. We can there doesn't matter what other gains we make. We can talk, you know, civil rights and all of that all you want. But if your immune system is weak and then and then that next pandemic comes and then you write back to a slave because now you're living in terror. And what I'm saying is that you don't have to live in fear. I don't live in fear of anything because I know that I can face anything because I know how I eat and live and that I eat and live intentionally. And I want to give everyone listening that power. And that's why I'm here in town with Brother Rock Newman um, at the historic Union Temple Baptist Church this Saturday. All and right. and before wanna... before we let you go, though, I got a tweet question for you, Minister Wellness. Twitter says, "Can you ask what is his opinion on fruit powders? The only ingredient is the fruit. It can be mixed with stevia or monk fruit." I don't have any great problem. It just depends on what I would have to see the whole ingredients. You know, I actually sell the a superfood powder on our website, so I don't have an issue with that. All right. Tell us about uh, Saturday with you and Rock, with Brother Rock. What, what are you guys doing over at Union Temple? Okay, real quick. So Saturday, again, I'm already in town. So Saturday, March 18th, so doors open at 10 a.m., free community health fair and seminar. Uh, you'll come on. We have a clinic where you can check your levels. The Physicians Committee of Responsible uh, Medicine, those are medical doctors that can assist you in weaning off any drugs that you're on. Uh, then we have Dr. Ruby Latham will have some delicious food. She'll also be speaking. And, of course, I'll be delivering a message to help to he- you to heal as quickly as possible. Uh, so you can come on, come on. Uh, if you do, if you want to guarantee uh, that you're able to be there, we do ask you to RSVP at dmvhealthfair.eventbrite.com, dmvhealthfair.eventbrite.com or the minister of wellness.com, the minister of wellness.com. But I don't want that to let anybody keep anybody from coming. And the number uh, real quick to call for any questions, comments, or concerns is 888-847-8026, 888-847-8026. And one uh, final thing is we talked a lot about obesity, Brother Carl. And I do have a end obesity 23 end obesity 23 promo code that gives you half off on my 
weight loss book, my weight loss package and all the vitamins and minerals, the minister of wellness.com, the minister of wellness.com end obesity 23 end obesity 23 blowout sale ending real soon. All right. Thank you, uh, Minister Wells. And thank you for what you do for our folks, man. And hopefully uh, Rock will give his testimony how much weight he lost as well. Yes, he'll be there. We're excited to see you all this Saturday, 10 a.m., Union Temple Baptist Church. Come on out, brothers and sisters. Free. No excuses. <laughs> all right. We'll see you there this weekend. Thanks, Minister Wellness. That's Nathaniel okay. Jordan, folks. The Minister Wellness, and uh, what he does is take care of our folks, you know, uh, health-wise.